because if, you know if we're talking in terms of things like sleep then I have nothing <laughs> I don't know what it was last night but half past two then three then half past three then four then half past four I was like, then I ran out of interesting things to look at on Facebook. Uh, ran out of interesting things to look at on Instagram. Yeah, I've been there. I hate to say it, but last night was the best night's sleep I've had in about two weeks. Mmm. I'm envious. Envious. Has the stream started yet? Yeah, it has. We've been looking at your house for a little bit. My house? My well? <laughs> is that what it is? It's a well. Looks like a small house with a porch to me from this angle. Wow. You're looking at it in the, the main view. And it'd be... It'd, uh, it'd be... Very toilet-like if... if it didn't have the sort of mangle in the middle, or the, the mangly sort of arm, which rotates just for, you know, added rotational edification. Yeah. But yeah, I've put one of the top panels in the wrong way around. It doesn't matter because it needs a, a, a little bit of skinning, um, so that's got some uh, roofing to go on it that I haven't designed or cut yet, but... It was suggested in the Ether Stream meeting yesterday, which extends into the Demon World meeting, that uh, they'd like some 28 mil stuff for another RPE Kickstarter. So there we go. There's the first piece. Mm. And I was dreaming about 28 millimeter mausoleums. Interesting. Not, not really. I wasn't dreaming about them. They were nightmares. Oh, bits falling off. So what we're doing today is buildings. 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 So these might not. <laughs> these, these might actually be quite difficult to paint in frame, but we'll see. Yeah, I suppose it's too late to change your um, picture and picture to the main and the main to the picture and picture. Uh, yeah. That'd be kind of pointless anyway. Mm. There you go, just like that. Oh, just you got like it now. That. So, we're going to start with an orange. on the bricks and I'll do the brick courses this is the roof that goes with it so come up with some tiles and I've got two of these to do so we'll do a little bit of variation on them just gonna go on mute while I vortex shake this All right. Now I have to remember who I am. You're the guy who does the thing. The thing. I'd be into monsters if I was doing the thing. <laughs> Wouldn't the thing be doing you? Oh. There might be some reciprocation in there, you never know. <laughs> Maybe we're thinking of different things. Well, Dr. Zeus did insist that there was thing one and thing two, didn't he? Yeah, I was thinking the Adams family, so. <laughs> 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 Now that's a good show and I should watch it again at some point. Absolutely. Uh, 
And there was a man who knew how to enjoy his train set. Yep. Oh, that's not working. I wonder if the army paint a speed paint orange doesn't bounce off the surface quite so badly. <laughs> Well, you did say that you got to do three coats on these things. So, yeah, okay, in true Dan fashion, and then I'm going to be damned lazy. We'll see how it turns out. Kind of surprised, because it's the same... ...primer as I use on the miniatures. But now you're painting. Yep. Now you're painting plywood and cardboard, kind of different to metal or plastic. They are. But you would have thought that the paint substrate would have sort of. Well, I'm making assumptions. Oh, is this this is already primed then? Yeah. I've only just primed. worked that out. How many coats early. of primer? Uh, two, I guess. I went around the building twice. Okay. Out of the air gun, I assume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing things by hand. Come on. I just finished telling you how lazy I was being. Two thin coats. Two thin coats. Maybe you need a third. Maybe. Eight hours sleep, it'd be nice. Yeah, well, I only got six myself. Wow, and you consider that a good night's sleep? Relative, yeah. Relative, yeah, everything's relative. <sighs> Le Mans starts this weekend. Well, starts and finishes this weekend, but starts later today. Well, there you go. Something to watch. Something to keep you awake through the night. Absolutely. At least then I will have something to watch. So what's on your painting table? Well, last night I finished off a packet of Vanilla Thane Warriors. With the blueberry faces, right. as you saw. Yes. And Vanilla I, and blueberry's a thing, isn't it? it if, if, if it isn't, it is now. But right. I seem to recall having blueberries in vanilla yogurt before. I primed a unit of the king's wolves oh yeah which is more basic sort of warrior looking dudes except they're wearing wolf pelts for armor okay. well cloaks and well, hats warmth. well yeah i think i don't think any of these guys are terribly bare-chested mm. they all look like they're wearing full tunics some of them might even be wearing pants it's heresy. Right? Half the ones I've painted so far aren't wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even if they're wearing kilts, they're not wearing socks. So you, That's... Are, you are actually painting Australians. Well, yeah. Basically. There is green. Right. There's quite a lot of green. Yeah. There's a bit of blue. Um, instead of gold, I'm painting bronze, but I'm highlighting it with 
gold. So oh, yeah. there you go. Bloody speed paints. What about them? Shit, just dropped something. just reached for a, a unit off my um, shelf to try and illustrate my point by <laughs> me talking about it. Yeah. And knocked it over? No, fortunately. So... Reactivation, basically. Mm -hmm. Just groaning about that because yeah. I can, you know, even give it an hour, uh, not an hour, a day or two days to dry and really set. Yeah. And then you just give it a, you know, a light code or the secret source. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to, but I happen to in this case. And it reactivates a little and runs and stains like it just flows downhill mm -hmm. with the the secret source, the top coat of the the pigment in that speed yeah. paint and it just stains whatever's beneath it. And so the leader off that um unit um has a blue belt. Yes which stained kind of yellow-brown <laughs> from right. the photo. And I'm like, I didn't even notice this until I took the photos. And it looks kind of okay, but doesn't photograph right. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't what you were attempting. So no. No, 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 no. That's quite annoying. I suppose I could go over it again, but I couldn't be bothered. Mm -hmm. It looks okay from, you know, three feet. Yeah. And some of the flocking's falling off because it can. <laughs> the flocking. Yes. It's, it's, I don't know, flocking's like static grass. You buy 100 grams of it to use 10 because the other 90 gets wasted in the process. Well, I do it over the containers, and I've been fortunate enough to not send any of them flying. Yeah. The trouble but is yeah, static grass you still lose them. You know, like, I've got the central heating on, so there's air movement around in the house, which means the static charges building up on everything, because air moving over anything produces friction and a static charge. So... I, you know, I start to put the static grass on the miniatures and, and you get this nice steady stream flowing out through the, 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 the sieve and, and you see on the edges, you see these swirls. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's like, well, we're not going down there. Bye. <laughs> Right. That's the red brick. He goes, that's not red, it's orange. Trust me, it'll end up red. Ish. Um, I want to do the door. I want to do the door. Doors. 
Oh man. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Be here in the brush. And uh, not one that's supposed to be there. One that was kindly donated previously at some point by a cat. I was going to say it wouldn't have been yours. <laughs> hey, don't you <laughs> knock my nose hairs, buddy. <laughs> telling somebody else about my finite theory of hair the other day. Not sure they found it funny. Well, tell us how it goes. I might well, the finite theory off. of hair is, is that you're born with a finite amount of hair and that over time it gets sick of living in the colder climates on top and goes to migrate <laughs> to warmer climes. Hmm. Okay. That and probably explains a few things. <laughs> Like, well, I've got this thick, luxurious head of hair. Eggs. <laughs> Although I tell you, it's been bloody cold up here. Yep, I know. I've seen Clee in a jacket and a beanie on. We were joking yeah, that it must have dipped under 25. It's down to 7 last night. Yes, that's cold. It's that's... cold for up here. <laughs> that's cold for down here. Which is about what it was down here, but yeah, I know. <laughs> I looked at the weather and I'm like, yeah. "Oh my god, it's Melbourne weather." Yeah, yep. it's actually. And then I saw that you were having the same. I'm like, hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's not like we gave it away; we just shared it. And yet here I still am in shorts and a t-shirt. Well, that's because you're a Queenslander. Yeah, I don't own winter clothing. Well, no, you do. You're wearing it. <laughs> yes, okay. Wearing a t-shirt is a concession to the cold. <laughs> the and yes, you... during the summer, I do frequently wear less. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy around here that walks his dog in shorts every morning. I find it... I just find people's habits amusing. He he must just wear shorts to work or something every day. He, you know, he must have some kind of labouring sort of a job where having long pants is inconvenient because of the, the temperature and all that kind of stuff. But he, he walks his dogs every morning. He'll wear a jacket and gloves in shorts. Hmm. That's different. Yeah, the nose is finally starting to dry up. Hey, any histamines for the wind? Do you reckon that door yep. looks suitably woody? It does. It I mean, dry the bit, no, it'll need some metal on it for the yeah. engine. But I'll have to paint a door handle on it because I didn't engrave one. So. All right. Blob of metal colour. Yeah. Cast iron and rust. I think the antihistamine is drying up my brain. <laughs> <laughs> what is this brain thing you speak of? Very similar to margarine, I think. <laughs> well, butter. Butter. I can't believe it's not butter. No, it's brains. Boy, am I going to need more than one of these beverages this morning. 
Well, yeah, by all means. I'm probably going to wander off to make a cup of coffee at some point too. But not yet. Mm. We've got a cup of tea that's been brewing for about half an hour. So it's probably okay to drink now. Do you reheat it or do you just drink them lukewarm? Room temperature. Yeah. All right. Tepid. Pretty much. Clearly, I'm not very good at painting. Clearly. Well, you can say that. I wouldn't. The lines are there. All I have to do is stay within them. Ah, uh, but that's not cool, you know. you got to allow your child to do whatever they want when it comes to colouring in to allow them to develop their creativity. Right. And you're someone's child. I am. One of my formative experiences along that line was when I was in preschool. It's the end of the year, Christmas time. And the teacher got up me. Yeah. The nativity scene is not supposed to be blue. <laughs> and so... Why went. not? The whole thing. And I didn't colour in the lines either. Nativity scene. Good God. This is gonna take a while. You're only just figuring that out now? Some days you're the bug, some days you're the windscreen. Today appears to be one of those days. Well, are you gonna paint the interior as well? Probably not. <laughs> so this is a 15 mil scale or is it it'd have to be 15 mil scale wouldn't it it is one of pretty the, reasonable size isn't it yeah one of the new buildings that will be complementing the Demon World range of miniatures. As opposed to the Empire ones, which are adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Empires, I should say. Empires. Yeah, you're talking about the little ones. The little buildings the little that ones. already exist. They're just a little bit too small, and there's no halflings in 
Garen or whatever it's going to be called. Mm. No, it's still called Garen. The continent is still called Tinere. We kept a lot of the same words. Just produced a completely new world underneath it. I'm amused at the behaviour of the contrast paints on this primer, on this substrate. It's not playing nice. And by amused, I mean frustrated. <laughs> well, don't forget, it'll look good at three foot. Does it? Well, it doesn't look so bad in the picture and picture, really. We're dealing, like, think about it, you're painting natural timber. It's been worked a little, mm -hmm. but it's still timber. It's going to have its imperfections. It's going to be darker in some spots and lighter in others. It's not like you're painting a space marine. No. I'm not. All those flat surfaces and all that. Well, there's a point. I am painting a lot of flat surface with a contrast paint, which they're not really designed to paint. Well, yeah, that's there's that too. And I realise I've taken completely the wrong lesson from it. But, I mean, you two layers of primer they're not going to be even things necessarily no so of course you're going to get darker in some spots lighter in others it's fine stop beating yourself up And I do want a little bit of, like, the um, the laser cuts are, obviously, they're laser straight. And, I, you know, I want a little bit of variation in it because this style house built, you know, let, let's, for argument's sake, say it's a, a medieval sort of technology setting, which it is, um, getting wood straight. Well, most of the time they didn't bother. They would split it, not saw it. And split wood is rarely, if ever, straight. See, there you go. Well, you can just say that they haven't invented the you know, water-driven sawmill. Oh, if they have... The people that built this house didn't have access to one. Mm. They've got access to technology for making bricks, but that's relatively simple. Yeah, well, they've been making bricks a damn long time. Didn't put frogs in them until a few couple of hundred years ago, though. True enough. I was watching a Time Team episode where they were dating something based on the fact that the bricks they were digging up had frogs in them. I said, well, there were no bricks in Britain that had frogs in them before this date, so therefore this structure must be at least newer than that. Which I thought was incredible. never considered that there would be an evolution of brick, but there is. Yeah, well, they don't put straw in them anymore, either. No. <laughs> Ado Adobe's still a thing, though. Like, yeah, but 
it's not your modern house brick anymore. No, absolutely not. Your modern house brick's more a decorative thing. Well, you have your face bricks as well as your regular bricks. There aren't, well, at least in this area, there aren't very many brick-structured houses. Like, they, most around here are all timber frame with a brick veneer. Huh. I'm living in a double brick house. There you go. But the interior, all the interior is laid out with the timber frame? No. It's all no. brick The upstairs wall. is double brick. Wow. Brick interior, brick exterior. Upstairs is um, uh, plyboard, I guess, on timber. But it's all sitting on uh, double brick walls. It's all sitting on double brick walls. There you go. There's not a lot of that down here. I suppose not. There might have been at one point. But... Well, it's probably a time and date thing. Like, okay. this house was designed and built in the early 80s, so... Yeah, right. That was the time. And on this street, which was part of an estate at the time, it's no longer an estate, but it was marketed as one, certainly. Just about everything is double brick. Right. But then you come out of this street and onto the street that leads to the main drag and you've got mostly um, fibro and fibro and more fibro. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of asbestos roof shingle. And those ones were all built in the 70s, so... Yeah. Yep. Nowadays, you've got people using steel frame in the designs of traditional timber framing, which is an utterly stupid idea and utterly wasteful. That's exactly what my parents did in the house they built. That's probably, you know, a few hundred metres from here. And they did that in the early 80s. Steel framed brick veneer. Yeah, but is did they use as much steel as they would have timber? Like every six hundred mil and uh, silly. Like the I don't steel. know the construction details. But they did it because it was cheaper. So I presume not. <laughs> I remember there were arguments about how often they had to tie the bricks to the steel frame, but I don't remember specific details about distance between uprights and like the floor was still a, a standard floor, so they would choice was space six hundred, but well, no, four fifty, I think. I'm yeah. guessing. I wasn't very old. The house is still there, and it's still largely the same shape that it was. So, so once upon a time, long, long time ago, I studied architecture. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it was taught by, you know, architects, so... <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Yeah, but also, one of them had a real hard-on for steel frame construction. Right. He was a Dutchman, actually. Right. Yeah, okay. um, thick Dutch accent. Yeah. Unpronounceable to English-speaking people's names. So he just gave up and said, you can say it this way and it's fine. I don't care. I'm used to it. Australians. Yeah. Nice enough fella, but, you know. Anyway. He had a real hard-on for steel frame construction and how people were using steel frames 
you know, in the same way that they would use timber. So yeah. he, and he was always railing against it because the way that people were using it, because steel frame, you can do bigger spans, you can have open areas, it makes open plan living an absolute ease mm -hmm. because you can have these huge spans with steel because it's a million times stronger than pine or yeah. even hardwoods. Yeah. And at the time it was significantly cheaper too. There wasn't a nickel shortage on like there was in the well, 15 years ago. And so when I see houses being built steel frame and you know, a traditional layout. It's like, this is silly. You could be doing so much better. Yeah. And for cheaper, because you're using less steel. Yeah. Well. Why aren't you doing it this I, way? You I guarantee people. that my parents would have chosen their steel frame precisely because it was cheaper. Because they didn't have a whole load of money. Well, given the price of steel these days, yeah. probably wouldn't make the same decision. Although yeah. people are. Of course, it's all Chinese steel. Yeah. So I mentioned to you before the stream started that I went to the caravan show that's oh, yeah. going on here. And that was interesting. Had a good walk around. I got to about two thirds of the thing over a space of five hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There was only one manufacturer that was advertising their stuff as not just Australian built, but built with Australian steel. Right. Granted, not a lot of them were advertising that their stuff was made of steel at all. Aluminium seems to be all the rage these days. Weight. But, totally yeah. Weight. Yeah. But, you know, you still got a four-ton caravan made of aluminium. And like, hmm. Well, this is the thing. If you make the body and the chassis and everything out of lighter materials, you can stick more stuff in them. Well, yeah, of course. That's why we saw some 16-footers that were 2.8 tons and why we saw some that were, you know, 1.8 tons. Mm -hmm. well, I was just commenting on the fact that not many people are making stuff out of Australian steel. Well, not many people there. Yeah. Not many people in that industry are advertising that they're using Australian steel. Yeah. Which is a little bit sad. Well, if aluminium is where it's at. I do wonder about the longevity of aluminium. Aluminium work hardens. So when you've got it in a device that suffers a lot of vibration eventually it cracks mm. the kayak trailer we've got is gal steel it's not aluminium couldn't tell you if it was Australian gal steel though when did you buy it? Or oh, did you build it yourself? No, it's a couple of years old. It's not very long ago. I could take a guess and tell you where it came from. Huh. China, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. The company... Yeah. The company manufactures the trailers in Australia but where they get the steel from I couldn't tell you could it be better than that Eastern European steel in the 70s 
well, Eastern European steel in the 70s is better than Chinese steel in the 70s. Well, that's true. In the 70s, they were still making pig iron in people's backyards. They probably still are. It's a very big place. <laughs> yeah, but they're not doing it in Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that story about them rolling out some other, or mandating some other cooking mechanism in time for the Olympics in Beijing because the traditional, what everybody was using at the time was sort of like a, a coke style stove that made a lot of smoke. And they banned them to clear up the atmosphere so that people wouldn't complain how smoggy it was. I don't know off the top of my head. Hmm. Hello, Google, my old friend. <laughs> I read the story behind that line not that long ago. Oh, yeah. And it went along the lines of Art Garfunkel had a friend at university who went blind. Had some kind of disease, I can't remember what it was, but he went blind. And um, Art took some time off to go and help this friend because this friend became very badly depressed and detached and shut himself away and, and all that kind of stuff. And Art helped bring him back out and finished off his degree and became what he wanted to become despite the fact that he was now blind and, you know, but that was, apparently that was, that phrase was one of the things he used to say, so... I didn't, however, Snopes it, so I don't know if it's true. Well, if it's Snopes, it's probably not. Well, no, it wasn't on Snopes, it was on Facebook, but normally you, you go and check these things because people post stuff to Facebook and you go, hmm, is that really true? Well, I wouldn't take Snopes as an authority on anything. No, but it's a, it's a general guide for if you need to start digging deeper. Uh, I'd still go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Snopes oh, has a... Good. Yeah, before they decided that they were uh, fact-checkers of things. Right. And then they were outed as being incompetent frauds who plagiarised their work. Right. Can't trust that was anybody, when they, I'm telling that you. was when they weren't outright just making stuff up. Right. No, you can't trust anybody. Can't trust anybody. And here you are taking my word on something. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly there. Well, it's only been 45 minutes. At this rate, I'll get one building done today. Mm. I don't know what's happened there, but I've done exactly the same thing again. There's that corner. That corner doing oh I see the brush is splitting fabulous
So have you learnt anything about Beijing Olympic smog yet? Well, I'm having a great deal of trouble finding out for the uh, 20, uh, 2008 Beijing Olympics because there were a lot of American news stories saying um, don't take your mobile phones, take burner phones. Right. And that's most of what burning has to do with as far as Google's oh, okay. memory goes. Although, in 2015, they did ban barbecues right? Uh, so that they could win the 2022 games. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. Oh, that was the Winter Olympics, yeah. Hmm. So they banned barbecues in 2015. Hmm. There must have been an awful lot of people barbecuing for that to have made a difference. Apparently. A lot more factories out there, but, you know. Mm. Barbecue factories. Probably them too. Sad to say. The Roomba is full. <laughs> I've never had one. But any time I hear people mention Roombas, all I can think about is cats riding around on yeah. top of them. Yeah, and you know, we were hoping... <laughs> Our cats have showed no interest in the thing whatsoever. No steady supply of internet meme videos for me. Oh, I don't know why I did that. I have to do the roof. <laughs> It's gone numb, so I need to do something different. You haven't got any more gone and got any more Gundams? No. No, I used to be uh, right into it, but not so much. They haven't. So, long story. Bandai hasn't made any TV shows that I've liked uh, in that franchise for. Wow, seven years. Hmm. And since most of the new kits that they make are out of new shows, um, yeah, that's where the money on the marketing is. Because those shows are just, you know, model kit 
<laughs> model kit advertising. That's all they are. Yeah. In reality, that's what the shows are designed for, to sell new kids. And yeah. I don't like the shows, and I don't like the new kids. Right. And there's a very limited stock of old kits that I might like. That I haven't already built at least once. Uh, and an even bigger limitation in the the styles and grades and availability. Because a year or two ago, they also started cracking down on third-party resellers. Yeah. Which means a lot of retail stores are having trouble getting hold of stock. Yeah. The company in Japan I used to buy through is no longer a stockist of Panto products, despite the fact that they're a big, legitimate company. Their Bando doesn't want them to compete with them, so they're no longer stocking their products. Right. They turned off the tap. I was like, meh. So, what was that? Was it? Uh, 1999. Ah, yeah, right. Great company, good customer service. You know, but Bandai turned off their supply, so they're no longer selling their stuff, which is... Eh. And Bandai are difficult to deal with directly, especially in Australia. Slightly better in America nowadays, but... Anyway. So, no, I've not been buying any of those kits... <laughs> much recently I need to get you into model tanks or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah four of them I've built uh, Gundams that is in the last three years right I was going to say you haven't mentioned anything about building model tanks uh, it's been a long time since I've built model tanks. Hmm. Was it a Centurion or a Challenger? I think it might have been a Centurion. <clears throat> it was the last one I built. And I would have been 10 years old. Right. Well, near enough to 10 that it doesn't matter. Good, I like that. That's come out nicely. So I'm going to go for a sort of a slaty effect on the roof. Getting this one's nearly empty. Nearly empty. Is it about brushes with hooked noses? I've had quite a few of those. I don't mind that too much as long as it's not on all of my brushes because it, you know, you can reach into some of those recesses a little bit easier. Wow. Chisel point now. <laughs> yep. I may have missed.
Is made by a painter who knows he now has to go back and fix something. <laughs> So, as you guessed, I've been having a bit of fun with the, um, the Army Painter Flesh Tone set, which is a good set. Yeah. But I didn't like how light the... Um, well, you got your nine Flesh Tones, right, in mm -hmm. that set, you know? Yeah. Of the three lighter ones, I didn't like how the middle one went on on top of the darker one. Right. It was too light. Yeah. Like, mm, it's almost white coming out of the bottle. Like, it's not what it looks like. It looks pink, but it goes on kind of whitish. It's yeah. probably because I had too much on the brush, but, you know, I just said, screw it. You know what? Some of the artwork for these guys has got... Uh, blue stuff on them, so why not? Mm -hmm. And that was the genesis of that. Nothing better than creative solutions to problems. Yeah. So the ones with the half face covered in blue, they had it the worst. I'm like, hmm. Right. Yeah, we'll just fix that and then we'll do the rest to make them... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make a match. Yeah, I got a bunch of twenty-eight millimeter Sky Warriors around here somewhere for the Roman invasion of Britain. You just dunk those in blue, couldn't you? Oh uh, no, I am not looking forward to painting them. Not at all. This is why I currently have 450-odd painted Romans and zero painted Britons. I am intimidated by it. Fair enough, too. No uniformity in them. No. Well, this the is individual the... standout showpiece. Yeah. Right, let's do the... The top. How are we doing for time, Matty? Kind of lost track. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Right. 
Yeah, you got a ways to go yet. <laughs> I think in every sense. It's really not playing nice. No, it's not. It's really, really being repelled. So there's almost like there's an oil or a wax or something in it. Yeah. Haven't been washing your brushes out in olive oil, have you? <laughs> no. Popeye put paid to that. <laughs> Never did see what he saw in her. Never mind Bluto. What did Bluto see in her? Uh, the opportunity to get one up on Popeye. Nothing more. I suppose so. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Good plan. <laughs> I've noticed I'm struggling a little. <laughs> when I notice I'm struggling, I know it's bad. I just noticed those uh, roof cap shingles aren't on straight. No, nice they're not. <laughs> That's not nice. To... You know how we just finished a conversation about making the best of a bad situation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this was a failed cut that had corrections applied in subsequent cuts, but I went, bugger it. It's 98%. I'm using it. So I was like, how do I, how do I show that somebody's got some ridge capping problems? Oh, I know. A particularly heavy butterfly. Yeah, what was the what was the what was that character's name out of ants? No idea. Never saw it. Can't remember. He had a German accent. So I'm a beautiful butterfly. Um. Yes, it was actually funny. Can't remember his name. Okay, let's have a look. It was blue or purple. I think. Mm, 
Maybe he wasn't. Hmm. Yeah, no idea. Well, maybe I'm thinking of a bug's life. Heimlich. Heimlich. Was it a bug's life? Um. No, it's Heimlich and it's a bug's life. Yeah. yeah. A big fat caterpillar. Yeah, and he turned into a big fat butterfly with tiny little wings, but he still flew. And he said, joyously, I'm a beautiful butterfly. Yeah, so it was Heimlich that landed on this house. <laughs> so we can... <laughs> Uh, that joke was far too long in the build-up and telling. We can just move on. Yeah, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Good man. <laughs> I'm going to stir some plank. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Looks like you were having a little bit of trouble with the roof shingle there. Does it? 
a little bit. Unless that's what you've been doing to it the whole time, just splotching it. That's what I've been doing to it. Oh, okay. It's not a solid coat of grey that I thought it might have been. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been an abject disaster if that's what I was aiming for. Hence no, roofs are, not, roofs are never a uniform colour. And this might look like absolute crap when I'm finished. So the white is going to be nine pound robins. Nine pound robins? Yeah. I don't know what they are. Dive bombing. Oh. Well, regular bombing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what because it can't be brown. No, the brown can't be. I'm reminded of why Green Day named that album Dookie. Yeah, pretty much. Just dry, damn it. Stick it in the dehydrator. No. <sighs> Not a good idea. Too much, too much effort. I can't believe I'm going to spend the entire live stream painting one building. That's. To be fair, it's a lot of surface area to cover. It is. I mean, how tall is it? How wide is it? How deep is it? I don't think it's very deep exactly. at all. My conversations with it haven't been very um, intelligent. So, 80 by 60 by no, 60, I suppose. So that's pretty reasonable. Go over there and look all mottled and disgusting. Eighty by sixty by sixty rectangle surface area. Mm. Twenty six thousand four hundred millimeters squared. So it's quite a bit. It is. It's a fair bit more than a goblin. And okay, yes, you're not painting a flat roof, you're painting more because you're painting the bloody shingle roof. Mm. So even more than that. I 
It did just have a brainwave. Mm. Yes, it hurt. And that's to paint the the skin before I glue it on. So paint the assemble the basic structure, mm. paint it, then paint the skin, then glue the skin on. Because then I can mm. use airbrush to paint the skin. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that wouldn't be much fun for a live stream. It would be terrible for a live stream because it would be a whole bunch of noise and a whole bunch of hissing. and So not unlike what we've got now. <laughs> Slightly less carping. Slightly more hissing. <laughs> oh. It's Saturday morning. I'm tired. Right, I think that blob's dry. Is that blob dry? It is, it's dry enough. Right. Do -do -do -do. Now for the real experiment. Yeah, this isn't what I wanted. It's all right. I'll go over it with another color. How about chartreuse? Yes. <laughs> uh, just kidding, of course. That'd be it. Very silly idea. I don't even know what... Is Chartreuse a pink? What colour is it? So, like, like, I know yeah. the word, but I don't know what it... As in, I recognise that it is a word, but I don't know what it means. It's a yellowy green. Oh, it's a yellowy green. But I've already got green and yellow up there. <laughs> Yeah, well, you could mix them together. Right. Why did I think it was a pinky colour? I don't know. I've decided that this, this particular colour, this particular contrast colour, is useless. Which one's that? Griff Charger Grey. Oh, yeah. And you can tell this is one of the early cuts because the the, the engraving the, falling the, apart. the engraving cuts are way too deep. It adds authenticity to a war-torn battlefield sort of structure. Mm -hmm. Happy little accidents. It got corrected, believe me. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like when you, when you pull a piece of card out of the laser cutter and it turns to powder in your hands... Half of it blows away in the breeze. So, mm, might have to dial back the power settings. Well, in this case, the power settings were dialed all the way back. They were down at 10%, so I had to double the, the head speed on it. All right. So, we go back to do what we were going to do before. So I don't, looking at it in the, 
the picture in picture, the wide angle view. I don't think that roof looks too bad with that. I don't know if it's just the lighting or. No, it looks all right. It's still a bit bright for my liking, so I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. And once I've toned okay. it down a little bit, then then we're done. So, and it's just a, a wipe over with the basilicum grey. It's just a just to darken it down a little bit. It's, I don't. You know, I've got no problem with the modelling, none at all. It's just it's just still a little bit bright. That's what I was more what I was going for. Yeah, okay, fair enough. It is darker now. But you know, you've still got all the modelling, which is yeah. what I was hoping for. So yeah. That would have been hilarious. I just about tried to put the dry paint onto the vortex mixer. That would have been very, very funny. Uh, not having any experience with the Citadel dries, what would have happened? Explosion. I would imagine virtually nothing. Not a very well kept house. In the middle of a war zone, why should it be? So I think I picked up a cold. <laughs> Either at the caravan show or subsequent travel. Mm. 
I've still got my sense of smell, but I've been, yeah. So you can smell oh, the coffee? I can smell the coffee, fortunately. In Brazil? Not in Brazil. And Brazilian coffee, so far I don't anyway. That was a Steve Martin movie. I'm trying to think of what it was. Was it Roxanne? I never saw that one either. Where he had the gigantic nose. I think it was. And he says, you wake up in the morning, you smell the coffee. In Brazil! <sighs> and apparently the new Top Gun's actually worth seeing. That's what I heard too. Mm. Jo saw uh, it with her son while she was away and she said, I want to see it again. Hmm. Interesting. She's a bit of a fan of the first one, though, although neither of us like Tom Cruise terribly much. So, so she's a Val Kilmer fan. Yeah. Have you seen the biopic of his? Like, Because nope. like, he got very, very sick. Yeah, it, cancer of some description, throat cancer I think, ended up having to do a tracheotomy and he has to have one of those press to talk things you know the things you push yeah. into your throat to talk and he's got a feeding tube and stuff like that so he didn't want to do the first Top Gun, he just didn't but he was under a contract and so they forced him to Interesting man. Complete nutcase, but an interesting man. A bit like sort of Johnny Depp, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's probably an unfair comparison. For Kilmer, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wondered where you were going with that. <laughs> Well, they do say the proof is in the eating. Oh no, the roof doesn't fit. In any given pudding. I'd be extremely disappointed if the roof didn't fit. Oh, all you can see is the roof. Hey, now I have a cottage. Looks pretty good. I think it'll be good enough at three feet. Absolutely. Two to go. Probably not going to make that in this live stream, am I? Not when it's 9.30. Oh, no. Unless you want to keep going for another... How many hours? I've got... Three. Way too much to do. So we'll do this puppy. Which is just basically a building site. An outhouse. Well, <laughs> it's the same size. It's also the same design. It just doesn't have any walls. Mm. Oh, and I just mangled the shingling. <laughs> it's patina. It's okay. Facade. Facade. F 
fakeade. That's what's on for the rest of your weekend. Um, quiet weekend for me, so probably a lot of painting. I noticed you said you went to the caravan and whatever show. Yeah, caravan, motorhomes, RVs, etc. Right. You didn't buy anything? <laughs> no. Right. Just checking. No, Andrea's the one who's interested in caravanning and motorhoming. Right. She wants to travel some. And figured that it's a good way, having spent uh, 18 months living out of a car, travelling around South Australia. Right. For giggles, not for financial reasons. Right. And she wants to do it properly, so, oh, big show, let's go have a look. And of course, everything is way out of everyone's price range. Of course it is. <laughs> I've been to some boat shows. I know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you'd live on a boat too if you wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was the plan, only it didn't work out. Couldn't afford a boat big enough to do it properly on. Yeah. Still, I've sailed Bass Strait, so there you go. There you go. An overnight passage down Bass Strait to Wilson's Promontory. And then back? Yeah, we stayed in Refuge Cove for a few days and then sailed back again. So you've done it twice? Sailed the length of, well... Yeah, western, <laughs> western port, yes. So, yeah, but the second one was a day passage, not an overnight passage. Yeah. Mind you, it turned into a night passage because we got to the entrance to Western Port on dark and then had to figure our way up the channel in the dark. I think we tied up at 3.30 a.m. or something. Hmm. Well, that's night on board as well, practically. Oh, yeah. Right. Shut everything down and went home and slept in our own bed and then went down and packed the yacht up so that it was neat and tidy and ship shape, so to speak, and then took off down to um, Apollo Bay for a week. We had originally planned to stay down in Refuge Cove for a couple of weeks, but by the third day, we were climbing the walls of the yacht. It wasn't big enough. We couldn't get off the yacht. There's literally nothing to do at Refuge Cove. So we thoroughly enjoyed sailing the boat, bobbing around at anchor, not so much. Fair enough. Yeah, that's been a concern of Andrea's. What's that? Having a living space that's, you know, small enough to be mobile, but not so small as to go stir crazy in it. See, most over of Over a protected period. And I'm thinking, well, that's a caravan for you. <laughs> yeah, but most of the modern caravans pop out. So, you know. Well, quite a few. Not all of them. Not all of them. I mean. Yes. Would have been one in ten that we saw had pop-out features. Okay. And they were mostly limited to one or two manufacturers. Hmm. Although some of them got quite a lot of quite a lot out. Um, the ones that are all pop-out with the fabric walls, you know. Yeah. Canvas walls. Those, of course, you can get much further on, but mm -hmm. she's not interested in those because they're unsafe to you know live in someone could just come along with a knife and zip away they go you know 
I don't know what kind of a caravan you're going to be secure in because... No, just, well, you can smash them all. They're... Exactly, the doors and frames are made to be as lightweight as possible, and so one decent kick on the door of a caravan, and you don't have a door in that caravan anymore. Yep. They're just lightweight aluminium and plywood, basically. So I don't Pretty know much. that she's going to get something that's <coughs> mobile and safe from that perspective. Some sort of fortress on a giant tarantula, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Oh, shall we look at that? Why don't we look at that? <laughs> I'm stiff as a board. No, oh, as long as you keep it in your pants. So they've managed to fit it all into the same size regular packet. Oh, no. No, it's a bigger bag and it's a tougher bag than the regular I've, stuff. I've seen the tougher bags, like the the big mounts yeah. uh, came in those bigger, tougher bags. Well, tougher, they're the same size, I thought, oh, roughly. I think they're bigger. You, you might be right that if they are, they're not by much. Yeah, so they'd be four or five mil wider and a ten mil deeper. So that they're bigger, but not by a lot. I I may or may not have painted a few. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, I've still got all my bags too. Actually, they're uh, filling up a box quite nicely. Yeah. They, they actually come in very handy. So we need to cut that piece out because it doesn't fit. Is his well that has to go on second that has to go on first then that goes on there and then there's legs palps and here but it's the howder. Then the sides are numbered, but I don't know what the numbering means. Oh, yes I do. It's numbering under here. Right. So that goes there. there juggling now one goes there that one goes there so that's the outer like without finessing it so that it's mm. And that, I think it might go the other way around. I think that goes like that. Oh, no. Oh. 
I'll have to look at the pictures. But I mean, when you consider that that's a regular sized goblin, that's a pretty big spider. Yep. Fit a few of those in the abdomen. Yes, I know that's not how spiders really eat things, but this one certainly could. It's big enough. <laughs> Can you imagine the liquefaction going on? Ooh, I'd rather not. It's got um, feral pelts on it too. So the interesting thing is going to be how to get it so that it's sitting off the ground. It's going to need, uh, maybe with the eight legs it's going to have enough support, but I would have thought with the weight on it over time it's probably just going to sag into the base, so I might actually have to put a couple Little. of pins in the bottom of it just to hold mm. it up off the base. Yeah. So that's something I've been meaning to ask. What do you use for pinning? Do you just use like a bobby pin that's being cut up to? Uh, yes. So, supposing you wanted to pin some wings on a dragon. Yes. Yeah. So I reach into my magic case of stuff and I either go for... So there's three sizes of... There's actually four sizes of thing in here. So I've got real, oh, real problems with my fingers, but get some tweezers, you idiot. No, I can't even pick the tweezers up. How about that? So real brass uh, where are we dressmaker pin so that they're real brass mm -hmm. then there's the chrome plated steel pin uh, they they are different diameters and obviously the steel is stronger mm. but it's also harder to work with yeah then you have your regular paper clip. Mm -hmm. Then you have your supersized paper clip. So it depends on what you're pinning. It depends on how much weight you're attempting to take with it. Depends on What facilities you have for cutting. I mean, you have to use pliers on all of them, actually. These cutters won't cut them, ever. You just notch them. Ask me how yeah. I know. Uh, same way I know, I imagine. Yeah. Um, Which I'm a little bit disappointed with to find out, to be honest. Yeah, but, you know. I was annoyed too. But that was the previous set that of these that I lit... Oh, hello. Yeah, it was a previous set, but um, they 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 were so broken that I just put them in the bin. Um, I continued to use them for a long while afterwards. But, so I've got side cutters, another set of side cutters, and you've got those sorts of cutters. typically use that orange handle set for cutting all of that stuff so mm -hmm. yeah um, the only problem is of course is you need uh, drill bits to match them um, which is where that comes in because that drill set's got every drill size in it from very very tiny to a millimeter I think 
more than. Yes, way more than. Well, you got that 20 drill army painter drill set, didn't you? Uh, it's only 10. Only 10, right. I think it's only 10. But yeah, that goes from 0 0.7 mil all the way up to 3 mil. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1 mil, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.5, yep. 1.7, 2, 3, I think it is, something like that. So if I, if I do some... Do some quick measuring. The brass pins point five five, so it'd be too small for any of the drills that you've got. That steel pin is point six four. So it would work with your smallest drill. The paper clips 0.8-ish. Maybe I should do it there. And the big paper clip is 1.1-ish. Mm -hmm. And you know you want clearance of about 0 0.2 there or thereabouts so that you can get some glue in there the other thing is is that you're never going to get the two things to make perfectly so you need a little bit yeah. of wiggle room um, so so yeah it's just drilling a pin vice and dressmaking pins or paper clips cut to size well i got dressmakers pins and i got paper clips yeah a pair of side cutters uh, you, yep. you got you got the pin voice in the drills, so away you go. I yeah. was obsessed with pin voices at one point, which is what I've got for. <laughs> I knew you had a few. Didn't know it was four. First one I got from my dad, and that's this one. And that's, so it's. Is old. So is it the one you use most or the one you use least? Funnily enough, it's the one I use most. Because all the ones I've bought subsequently have all got something wrong with them in one form or another. Um, I'd like this one. So it's the one I use second most. Um, this... I think this one here, which is the one I use least, is the worst of them. It had a really bad um, uh, where the the spindle is. It was a really bad fit, and yeah. it would cock sideways and jam, which is why I've um, center punched it a couple of times to spread it out a little bit so it doesn't jam. But it's not that one's not very good, um, and this one's. Not brilliant either, but it's better than that one. So. Fair enough. But yeah, you can see, like I've got a, I've got a drill loaded here that does the steel dressmakers pin, so it's around about 0.7, I think ish, and a three in that one. So, and sizes in between. I still have to change drills from time to time. You know, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to card with some, some 80s, a couple of 77s, a couple of 74s. These, this card, like this is Victorian Hobby Centre, like all the 80s I broke. So these are replacements. But these 277s and those 274s were drills that I bought from Victorian Hobby Centre when I was about 17. Wow. So they're old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here's another three eighties. Four eighties. So yeah. And, and a newer Victorian Hobby Centre. And Victorian Hobby Centre doesn't exist anymore. 
it's a different shop I think and it's moved because they knocked that whole row of buildings down so the pub's still there but all those buildings where the Victorian Obi Centre was aren't there. Clee was saying he was in there not that long ago and that's where they're putting the new station the new loop station so So that's one big spider. It's only one of the big What's spiders got I got. But you got other big bugs of, as well, of course. Yeah, a absolutely. Scorpion. Isn't there a version of that giant spider that doesn't have the tower as well? There is. is. I didn't get that. I only got the one that's got the tower on it. Um, I'm sure if I push the point, I can get one. To be honest, it was really only the one with the tower on it that I wanted. Hmm. No, it's more impressive. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's actually going to be a difficult piece to pick up and move around the battlefield. Just for mass. So Put some little wheels... Under the um, base. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of little wheels, so it's the, the large catapult. Which I'm looking forward to putting together. That's the Uncroid. So that's a medium-sized scorpion with a crew. There's the giant stag beetle and crew. Trogulibus. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the stag beetle's pretty big. Yes. Um, there's the stomade, which is the dung beetle. And he's got a giant ball of dung. Of course. There's the... Which you, you'll find is actually full of bones. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It is. That's going to take some interesting painting. Um, there's the Temicardus Riders. Um, spider Hunters. So, goblins with nets. Just exactly how a, a goblin with a net is going to catch that, I'm not entirely sure. Offer itself up as bait, maybe. There's well, the... maybe they're going for the smaller spiders. You think? Well, I think, I, think I think they're like every other male that has ever been, and they're going to be like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the monocoloid. So it's a gigantic bug. That is a really big chunk of stuff mm. here's the the horridus oh no oh yeah no it's just a it's a a, a beetly type thing and there's the the macro theory which is actually, like, I'm okay with spiders. Like, I'm a catch-and-release kind of person. Mm. But even half partially assembled, this thing gives me the heebie-jeebies, so... Yeah. Like, that, that's, that one's desperately uncomfortable. That's a, a giant redback, and I'm going to paint it up as a giant redback. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I, when I, when I was cleaning out the garage to move from the house in Emerald to here, I had to move my wood stockpile. So this was the wood that I was using for making things like fitting out the workshop and making tables and shelves and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, long sheets of long strips of wood and long and big sheets of wood. And in that process of cleaning that section of the, the garage out, I 
killed seven full-grown female redbacks. <sighs> it was yeah. an uncomfortable day. Like, you know, I, I get a little bit of a skin crawl with the, the huntsman, but I know the huntsman can't kill me. Um, I know they'll give me a decent bite, and so I'm careful with them. But I'll move them because the huntsmen are very, very good at, at getting and killing other mm. things that need to be gotten killed. Bugs and, and stuff like that. But redbacks, redbacks die on sight. I am merciless with them because Joe has, be. uh, Joe has grandkids. Right? You, you, can't, you can't have kids playing in the backyard getting bitten by those. And those full-size females... They're lethal. Yeah, we haven't had a, a um, we haven't had a redback spider death in Australia for a very long time, very very long time. Um, because most people are smart enough to kill them on sight. Yeah, and and we have very effective anti venom, but um, there's still it's still a remarkably unpleasant experience. But oh. so this looks like it's some kind of steam contraption. Not sure whether it's a steam cannon. Maybe it's a steam cannon. Mm. Maybe it's the army DJ. I can't tell. Mobile still. It could be. Absolutely. These could be the <laughs> people that are supplying the beer that is being held while the spider hunters. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's the the giant scorpion. So you can see the difference between the size of the giant scorpion and the uncroid. The scorpion's like twice the size. Holy cow. Yeah. There's a bunch of... Oh, they're the... Yeah. So, given what I've already... Oh, there's the small catapult too. So... Given what I've already painted for the goblins, there's some really, really good, fun, interesting stuff in here to do. So, some of the live streams in the next little while will feature some of these critters, I think. Yeah, goblins are a really characterful army. Yep. Yeah, they are. Oh. If I could just do them with beetles and no spiders, I'd probably be, be doing them myself because you know <laughs> spiders are a thing for you yeah uh, they're no, a I thing mean, for joe too so yeah. i was just thinking about the huntsman living in the downstairs toilet yeah. i let him alone because over the course of three days that he was hanging out in there just recently he cleared out absolutely everything Right. Except for a cockroach. Right. Um, so we got all the, the daddy long legs and yeah. one or two bigger spiders. And there's a cockroach that he just left on the floor drained because he could. Everything else, no trace. Yeah. And he's had the good sense to move on since. Yeah. So that's what you want. If you get a yeah. house guest like that, to, to be the perfect house guest and... No one is not bloody welcome. <laughs> he kept out. He kept out of sight during the day. Yeah, which they yeah. do. Which is yeah. Showed up at night and you, you are, took care of business while I was asleep. I know you say to. he, but in all likelihood, if it was a good size, it was probably she. Yeah, well, it was about the size of my hand. So yeah, yeah. so she. The males don't get that big. That's a good beetle. It's pretty reasonable length. I'd call him Ringo. <laughs> My favourite of the Beatles. So yeah, some very, very good characterful stuff in there. I'm looking forward to that. It is re-energised because the last little while has just been painting um, core troop unit after core troop unit after core troop unit and it got a little bit old. Sadly. Mm. Well, I felt a little bit the same after getting through most of the Isthak and then... Yeah. 
Well, everything in the Thane range is very characterful. Yeah. Even the basic troops are just. <laughs> Look at me. Am yeah, I not yeah. entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertained? Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. I think we're done. Yeah, you better get to the airport and pick up Joe. I don't have to do that till about seven tonight, but I've got an immense amount to do before that. The dishes. What? <laughs> I'm not playing to stereotype, but the dishes have been done. We, I mean, we have a a, a high end dishwasher. Um, it's been used half a dozen times since she's been away, so... But things like... I haven't wiped down the benches, and... I've made a bit of a mess on the stove, and... So... Fair enough. Just tidy all of that up so that when she gets home she doesn't have a nervous breakdown about how dirty the house is, because... We go through this process when she goes on holidays that she cleans everything before she leaves so that she can come back to a clean house. So the, the, <laughs> the last few days before a holiday is manic. You, you, you're packing, you're prepping, but you're cleaning and you're cleaning everything. So, so she's gone away from what she thinks, well, what she knew was a clean house. <laughs> so the expectation is when she comes home, she comes home to the clean house secret test of character for you mm. so I'm about to go and put my washing on so that we don't have a basket full of washing and make sure the kitchen's clean and then after that I've, I owe Don some images so I need to start taking some photos and making some images mm. are we um, not Aether stream no, this is for Demon Royal World. Image. So oh, good. this is for the free rules that are coming that will be released in time for Gen Con. We all cool. gave ourselves uh, an additional 100,000 things to do in the meeting yesterday. So uh, if Don's going to be able to do what we've decided he's going to do, I need to get him some images. Yeah. Alrighty. So there we go. Right. I'll leave you to it. Thanks, folks. Thank you. I'll uh, see you next week.